Hi guys and welcome to another kit review. Okay, so today we're going to have a look at a kit from Tamiya. 135 scale. It is their Type 166 Schwimm Wagon. Okay, so as you can see, classic Tamiya. Colour art of the actual vehicle. You do get a driver figure with this. You do actually get a um, engine with this Schwimm Wagon. Okay, so this kit... The kit number is 35224 and came out in 1998. It's a completely new tooling for the Shrimp Wagon from Tamiya. The original Shrimp Wagon came out in 1970. Uh, the kit number for that one was MM103 and I do remember making that back in the 70s and it was a fairly basic kit if I remember rightly um, and if I remember rightly it was possible that you could actually float that kit the way it was built um, I don't have one still around unfortunately but yes I do remember you could actually float that one it was kind of designed so that you could actually float it so it's yeah it was fairly basic so we'll see what the difference is with this one all right so there's your cover nice little box art usual standard white background now tamiya military miniatures all its tanks and things apart from a few usually get just a plain white background let's have a look at the rest of the box so two-tone camouflage screen overall dark yellow and green three vision views of it this i suspect is just um in Japanese probably just a brief history correct me if I'm wrong I can't speak Japanese so I can't really say yes or no on that on the other side same again so overall gray okay so needless to say this is a swim wagon so it does have a little propeller on it it does have oars that go with it okay was powered by an air-cooled four-cylinder engine standard Volkswagen engine okay so Let's have a look and see what's in the box. I picked this up a fair while ago. It was fairly cheap. I think it cost me about $10, $12 Australian. Okay, so instructions. Put those aside for now. Decal sheet looks fairly comprehensive. One bag of sprues, which is the body of the vehicle, the wheels, the top, the inside. Okay, looks like the running gear. Another bag which has got the windscreen in it. Your driver figure, seats and fittings like exhaust pipe, etc. Oars. Okay, so two bags of sprues. Not much else. This is an advertising for Tamiya's paints. And does actually have a lacquer paint chart on the back. And that's all there is. So let's have a look at the instructions. Okay, so. As you can tell. That is actually a photo of the model itself. And you've got Japanese, French, German, English. History of the vehicle with some basic specifications. As in... How many there were? It says here 14,276 Type 168s. So there was an awful lot of Kugel wagons, Schwimm wagons, you name it, built during the war. And not many left in existence. Okay, so that's pretty good to know. It's always good to know history on the vehicles. All right, so let's have a look and see what's inside the instructions. Now, so, usual, use these tools. Tamiya paint callouts. So as I said, this is a 98 issue. Back in the 70s, Tamiya didn't have its own paint. So it just gave you the name and left it up to you to where you got your paints from. But in all the newer kits, of course, Tamiya advertises just its paint callouts. Okay, so start off with the basic construction of the steering and drive gear. Fairly simple. So this is a basic simple kit. Great weekender kit. I think great weekender 
tyres. Tyres go on, nothing hard about that. As you can see, this gets an engine. Now, the 1970s kit had nothing. This actually gets a full engine with colour call out of how to paint the engine. So whether you choose to leave it open or not, that's entirely up to you. But if you weren't going to, there's no reason why you need to put the engine in. Okay, like I said, entirely up to you. But that's a good thing to have. Really nice detail. Okay, so next we come to... Okay, putting in the seats into the um, passenger compartment. It does give you colour call out. In a second we'll have a look at the sprues and see if the seats actually have some kind of texture. The engine compartment goes into the body shell. The passenger compartment goes in. So this is a fairly straightforward, easy build. Okay, at that stage there, you'd want to make sure the inside was all mostly painted. You do get a mesh to go over the ventilation point. Okay, that's it right there. And that is actually behind the back seats. That's the air intake for the engine. Okay, engine cooling. You get fuel tanks. So all these bits and pieces. And you do get some mesh for side vents as well. So all these details were not in the original 1970s kits. As I said, this is a complete retool, upgraded details. So far from what I'm seeing, it's really nicely done. Really nicely done. Okay, so a couple more bits and pieces go on the inside of the upper body. Okay, that's for your spare wheel. That's fairly straightforward. There are decals to go on as well. And then the upper body gets attached to the bottom. And you're almost done. Okay, 10 steps and you're almost done. Windscreen, be very careful. This is just, um, it's not even um, plastic. It is, what they call it? Polyurethane, I can't remember what they call it nowadays. So fairly flexible, soft stuff. Easily scratched, okay? Easily scratched. Windscreen goes on. Headlights. Spade. Okay, so here you have your exhaust pipe. This handle here is how they dropped the um, propeller and pulled the propeller back up again. Have a look on YouTube. Type in Schwimmwagen. You'll see exactly how it was operated with that handle. That's the most critical handle to have. Okay. As you can tell, your canvas cover is folded. Paddles, spare wheel, engine cover. Okay, so that's closed and open. All right. That's entirely your choice as you want to have it done. If you're going to have it closed, you could probably leave the engine out completely. Then you've got your propeller. That's most critical. Okay. Shows you on land, on water, up or down. And then your driver figure. Shows you how to paint him. All Tamiya colours. Fairly straightforward, like I said. This is an easy build. And then, basic painting. Okay. All over dark yellow. And then just with uh, red, brown or green splotches on it for Normandy okay and there you go she's done very easy quick build all right so let's have a look at the decals so it's decals so the decals do have from what I can see tactical and divisional marks as well as number plates they're all their mark number plates and no, I'm wrong. There's a couple of SS ones there too. So I will give you a still photo of that so you can have a good look. But the decals look nice and sharp and clear. And yeah, I like them. I like it the fact they give you tactical divisional marks. A lot of kits nowadays don't do those. Okay, in a second we will have a look at the sprues.
Okay, so let's have a look at this bruise. But first off, let's have a look at a critical part. This is the windscreen. Sorry, that's a bit shiny, guys. It is very clear. Okay, it is nicely clear. But as I said, it is not injected molded. It is basically the same kind of thing that your plastic packaging is made of. So if you do scratch it or damage it, if you've got plastic packaging from, say, oh, I don't know, a toothbrush or anything that's got plastic packaging, okay, so long as you've got the size, you can use that. The only thing you have to be aware of is this stuff is very sensitive and easily scratched. Okay, so we'll put that aside carefully. And then I will show you this. I hope you can see it. Uh, let me see. Where are you? You want to use the back of the decals. That might be better. This is the mesh that you use for the air vents. Oh, sorry, that went out of focus. Come on, girl. There you go. Very fine mesh. Love that. And there should be sufficient there for all of the air vents plus extra okay so i'll give you a shot of that anyway close up to get a really nice look at it okay so there is only two sprues and one part this is the single part this is the bottom of the vehicle as you can see nice access point there really nice detail so this was built as a tub which is why it was waterproof so you won't see much in the way of join lines as you can see it's basically two sides and a center section that's how she was built and that's why she's been rendered that way so no interior detail because natural enough you actually put the interior in. So there's the whole tub. So first sprue is top of the vehicle, passenger compartment. Okay, there's your engine cover, wheels. Okay, so these are all your interior bulkheads steering and drive so let's have a look see Oops, sorry there you have it so there isn't a great huge amount of and you won't find it on a swim wagon all right there won't be bolts and things sticking out all over the place all right the way it was constructed pressed steel the big machine done there is your engine compartment, okay, passenger compartment, standard duck boards, steering, petrol tanks, tires and wheels, okay, nice detail, nice tread pattern. And the drive hubs, same as you get on Kubel wagons. So the hubs on a Kubel wagon actually had gearing in them. It's all right. That made it much more, e much easier, I should say, much more easier, much easier to drive the vehicle over terrain. Gave it better um, torque. Okay, so that's the top. You've seen the bottom. What's left is basically your figure, seats, and all your fittings, exhaust pipe, propeller, etc., engine, and your windscreen. 
Okay, so let's have a look at those. I love the canvas top. All right, pick that out with a nice bit of wa nice wash. Sorry about the blurriness. I don't know why she's doing that. And that will come out really well. There's your propeller. Really nice detail and engine. Okay. So the detail on the engine is awesome. Having owned a uh, Beetle brings back memories. There's your oar. Windscreen. That's the back of your driver. Yes, the seats do have a texture, which is very nice. Very good looking spade. So let's have a look at your driver's face. Yes. Nice detail. Pick that out with a little bit of shading. You'll come up really well. Okay, and that is the last brew. So there isn't much to this. It would definitely be a weekend build. Definitely uh, the kind of model that I would recommend for a beginner. It's not too hard. Even putting the fine mesh on the vents would not that be the, that hard at all. Okay guys, and that's it. That's your swim wagon from Tamiya, 135th scale. Two sprues and a body tub and some accessories. Fairly straightforward, easy build. All right. So until next time, thanks for watching. And as usual, take it easy and I'll see you later.